Well, good afternoon. I don't see anybody that's uh, it's on here. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I should uh, check uh, to see. Why I don't see participants, but that's okay. Um, we are recording. Um, a couple of uh, a couple of items, bookkeeping or whatever you want to call it, administrative. Um, our TA office hours, which this uh, this is on the uh, the Google Drive uh, page. Uh, the 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 TA is, is uh, Hunjin Choi, and he is in room five one o four, and he will have office hours Wednesday uh, from one to two p.m. And Friday from uh, 11 to 12. Uh, strictly speaking, that's that's a.m. Um, in in 104, 5104. Somebody had asked about that, and he, I hadn't uh, cleared that with him. There's another thing I'm going to, I'm not going to put the document because it's not my document, but I'm going to give you a link to a really excellent uh, paper. Um, paper by Jim McCauley, who was at Iowa State University. And um, modeling... Um, of of cost rate curves for generators. Okay, that's the title of the paper, um, and I will just put this uh, in the in the Google Drive, uh, and then you can you can lift the um, the. Uh, I'm not going to write it out. It's a, it's a URL, but he gives a URL to a PDF document that he has posted. It's an excellent summary, an excellent summary that uh, that Jim McCauley uh, put together at, at Iowa State. They have a. You know, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not proud. I think we have a great program, and Iowa State uh, has a very good program too. So, uh, Iowa State has. Um, has always had a very, very famous uh, double E department. Um, I remember when I was in, uh, I guess, high school, uh, the first U.S. satellites went up, and they were measuring uh, the various uh, uh, things that they found up above the Earth, and they had they had a device to measure. Uh, uh, ions in in the in the uh, I don't want to say atmosphere necessarily but above the earth and in, in as it stretched away and they found these belts that they called the Van Allen belts the, and Van Allen was a professor at Iowa State uh, in the in the power area um, for many years there there have been very very f there were very famous uh, professors Paul Anderson uh, to me, was the the best known. He's he's deceased, but he uh, he he wrote uh, many many books on power system relaying and and machine theory and uh, various uh, sequence network and mm -hmm. things like that. I've used his book uh, many times, uh, Paul Anderson. So um, and uh, Aziz Fuad was another one. And uh, that that program is still is still active and uh, still has ex excellent people. And Jim Jim McCauley has done a good job for this. Program. 
so much of a plug for, for Iowa State. So if you hear if you meet people from Iowa State, you can say, well, Wallenberg was, was speaking well of you. So. <laughs> okay, um, today, and, and anything I present today that's printed out, I will, um, I will, I will post uh, along with, you know, it, with the notes for the lecture. But for, for um, January 24th, the, the topic in the... The topic in the, in the uh, syllabus says economic dispatch linear programming. Now, if you're a graduate student, um, I recommend that you take a course in optimization theory of some sort. Um, where they will cover linear programming among other topics. It's it's probably the most powerful optimization uh, technique uh, since Lagrange. Um, <clears throat> the secret of why why LP and if you if you do much with with optimization it becomes apparent why this is so useful. So, why LP? Um, and, and the reason is that LP can handle inequality constraints easily. We'll put an exclamation mark. LP can handle inequality constraints easily. Now, LP does not, because it, as it says, it's linear programming. It doesn't handle uh, functions with uh, powers of anything greater than one. Anything, you know, you can't have quadratic, cubic, etc. in either the objective function or in the in the constraints. Um, and <coughs> But, but um, there's never any confusion as to how to put it together. It figures out what constraints are binding uh, at the optimum. You don't have to be worrying about the, 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 uh, the Lagrange multiplier mu uh, for all the different variables that have upper and lower limits. And what we're going to do um, in, the, in the homework problem that I'm going to post for for Friday, I'm going to post Friday, is uh, homework, um, which will be homework two. So among other things, is we're going to, we're going to do an economic dispatch of three generators using LP. And LP can, can, and, and this economic dispatch has three generators with quadratic cost functions. So, how does it do it? And we're going to go through the, the, the theory as to how you put that together. And then I'm, I'm going to post a, uh, I'm going to give you a file. It's an M file. Boy, that, that'll be interesting. I'm going to put the M file into Google Drive. I hope it doesn't convert it to something. <laughs> if it does, I'll, I don't know if you can put a zip file in there. I, I, I suppose I could uh, put, put all these into a zip. Um, I've got to get used to, to Google Drive. This is a new concept for me. Uh, the former years, I've always done things with a uh, web page. But the nice thing about the Google Drive is anything I want the students to have, I just dump it in there and put a title on it, and there it is. Um, but what I found out, I, I had a terrible time getting the video to work. <laughs> As you could tell, I, I recorded the video last week and it didn't record all the audio. This, this time, I am, I am uh, 
trusting that uh, I, I did the one last night for the last week's lecture, and it recorded it recorded fine. And so I put I put it on Google Drive, and it wouldn't let me see it for quite a while because uh, it said it was converting it. So I don't know what they do, but you get the you get the top the, the the file name, and I'll try to make the file name self-explanatory, and I'll. <clears throat> I'll constantly keep putting new directories so you can go find things. So this will be homework too, and it'll have a, a MATLAB program that you can run. Um, I trust, I trust that you can, that some somebody should look into this, that your student versions have access to the optimization toolbox. Because... Um, we use MATLAB, and MATLAB uses a program, LinPro, which is a very, very nice LP. It's a very powerful uh, linear program. I, I, what, what I did, I'm, <laughs> I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to get a little sympathy out of people sometimes. But when I was a PhD student, um, we didn't have MATLAB. Now there were LP packages, but they were on big IBM mainframes, and I was using uh, mini computers and and so forth. And so I wrote my own LP, and I used that for years. Um, it was only in the in the nineteen nineties after I had started at the University of Minnesota teaching. And this and this friend of mine, Prefon Georgiou from our department, said, "Bruce, you have to get on. You have to start using MATLAB. Wait till you see how powerful it is." And so I did. And there's this this optimization toolbox, and there's LinProbe, and oh, it does so much. And it does. It's a very very powerful linear programming package. The truth is, I think that MATLAB is. Um, I guess it's got lots of power for, for, for other fields, but it seems to me that it's particularly oriented towards electrical engineers. There's all kinds of signal processing and so forth, which is mainly AA. Um, fantastic software. Fantastic software. Um, and you can just use it uh, at the university. Now, if, you, if your student package doesn't have that, then we're going to have to set up uh, uh, a system where you can get in and use the university's uh, uh, package um, from the um, at, at at one of the university labs there on the on the third floor, perhaps. Uh, but let's let's cross that bridge. So look up uh, and see if you have Linproke. Okay. And we're going to talk uh, now about um, the, 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 the theory of, of linear programming and how you use linear programming to solve an economic dispatch. And I'm going to give you some instructions about, the, um, about Linprog and how you set things up with Linprog and, and so forth. Let's see, here's page one. By the way, I... I went and I got some some very nice pens today at Staples, this the local Staples near me. What are they called? They're called Evergel, but they're they they're supposed to be very bold. If you if you care to comment sometime, let me know if if uh, if they uh, if they do. Uh, a good job for for you, okay? I'm gonna okay. So, um, linear linear programming. We have a very nice uh, appendix in chapter three. That material was put together by Jerry Shebley, my, my co-author Jerry Shebley, who, by the way, at the time that he wrote that material, 
was at Iowa State. He's he's no longer at Iowa State, but uh, he was one of the one of the uh, I think top people at Iowa State for for many years. And Jerry put that that uh, chapter together, that appendix, pardon me, together. So the idea is you have an, an we always go as follows: there you have an objective function to be minimized. And and in in linear programming, they often will will say f equals um, c1 x1 plus c2 x2 plus c3 x3 cn xn. Now we use c because that's a, that's cost function and, and x x1 to xn are the variables. We'll have more on more on that uh, in a in a minute. Um, but notice it's a linear function. It's a linear function. There's no squares, cubes, uh, or any other, you know, sines or cos. You can't put all kinds of nonlinearity things in there. What you're going to see in this course is that you can you can bend things to fit into LP and you. you you might be sitting there thinking, "This is why, why bend it to just to fit into LP when we have these Lagrange methods and we have dynamic and so forth and so on." The problem is that LP handles constraints so powerfully, and it's so much better to bend it, which is kind of a interesting word, but it's it, it, you bend the problem by by linearizing it to fit into an LP so that you can take advantage of those those constraints. So we, we say that's our that's our linear function. The uh, and and then we say we have constraints. And and I'll say we'll start out like this. We'll say well I'm gonna have I'll have three constraints. A11 x1 plus A12 x2 plus etc. A1 n x n equals B1. Now, this is this is an equality constraint because I've got an equality sign. I've got an equality sign. So by, by definition, I can I can put these equality constraints in, and um, I'll I'll put uh, let's say th one or two or three of them. So a two one x one plus a two two x two plus a two n x n equals b two three one x one plus a three two x two plus well, if you think about it, um, once I've satisfied three constraints, now it's got n variables, that, that reduces um, the, uh, the space of solutions. Um, if I were to put n equality constraints, and I only had n variables, and I had linear, uh, linear, you know, equations there for those constraints that were all uh, that were not linearly dependent on each other. Well, then basically the constraints you solve it where where everything comes together and there's the solution. Well, obviously we're not going to go that far. We're not going to put in uh, that many constraints, um, but. That's, you know, that that at, at least to start out with here. I want you to I want you to understand that that um, corporations like IBM and and there's there's several other uh, AT and T did for a while. They built these codes, and the government, the military, large corporations, etc., use these codes, and they may have tens of thousands of variables 
and tens of thousands or whatever of constraints. That might be a small. They may have a hundred thousand variables and maybe fifty or sixty thousand constraints, etc. So LP and and you can simulate. Enormous scheduling problems of uh, of uh, the strategic interest of the government or to a corporation. Um, we're going to show later in the course how you do <coughs> uh, linear programming applied to hydro scheduling problem. It's it's a very uh, straightforward uh, application, and you can you can uh, you can do a an, an LP. Uh, with a with a fairly difficult uh, hydro scheduling problem. Um, prior to the use of LP, those difficult people use dynamic programming, which we'll go over in, in a couple of weeks or so. All right, so so there's a bunch of of constraints. Now, one of the things I'm gonna I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna shift this up, and is I'm going to say, well, I'm going to put the, the I'm going to build a constraint matrix called A, and in in this case, I will say A times X equals B. These are vectors. Now, um, A goes from 1 up to the, uh, the number of equality. Let's say N E Q. No, that's not good. Yeah, n number of equality constraints. And then here it goes 1 to N. And so this goes from 1 to N, and this goes 1 down to the number of equality constraints. Okay, so that is a very common way to represent it, and that's called the 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 constraint matrix. And that, in this case, it's only so far. It's only got the the uh, constraints for the, uh, the the equality constraints. Mm -hmm. um, the MATLAB program. You, what you do is you, you hand it the, this, this matrix and you hand it this vector here. And it builds our, and then you, you have to hand it um, this vector C up here as well, the cost coefficients. And then it solves for you. All right, so that's, that's the beginning of it. Um, I'm not going to cover today the theory of how you solve LP. That's in the appendix in the book and that was in the, the videos. Um, I would not be surprised if there's if there isn't a very good YouTube video from some other from MIT or Stanford or who knows about basic linear programming. So I would encourage you if somebody finds one let me know. And we'll post it with the with the class notes so that uh, people know where what a good uh, background. If you haven't had a course in in optimization, um, the University of Minnesota it, it's it's very interesting. The, the University of Minnesota Computer Science Department. When I first came to the university, they taught courses on optimization on linear programming. They had my brain just doesn't go down deep enough and, and bring the guy, the fellow's name. There was a professor that I, I knew him from his pa papers on linear programming. He was a professor at Minnesota. I, I met him when I first came and he taught a course and I used to, t my students took that course. They, they were told to go take that course. There was one on LP and there was one on nonlinear programming. So uh, I'm not sure, I, it may be more in the uh, operations research or system engineering over mechanical engineering now. Okay, now, so, so we've got, we've got, um, let me back up here, we, we've got a cost function, we've got a, some equality constraint, there's several more things that we need to uh, specify. Now, now I'm going to specify some in equality.
And in in general, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just call it like a one one prime x one plus a one two. These are just different. It's a different matrix x two a one n x one. This is prime is less than or equal to b one. There's there's your inequality. Okay. And I can have I can have a lot of these because we know that they're not all going to be active. Or normally they're not all active. Uh, this is two two. I'm sorry. This is not. This is two one. Two two prime x two. A two n x and this is n less than or equal to b2, and I should put a prime on here as well. So, near, now I have two inequality constraints. And the LP that we're going to use from MATLAB, uh, make it's very easy to, to load that data in. And we simply load it in, um, and... and um, as a as a different matrix so in fact let me see here's it has a matrix a which in this case just goes from one it has two rows and it has uh, n columns it and then it's the same x's so it's the same x factor one to n and, and here it has B, <coughs> B prime, which is for the, the inequalities, 1 to 2. I, I just drew two of them. Now, in, in, my voice in the middle of this lecture but it I may have to go put a cough drop in don't get sick fellas it's not happy it's not fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what they do is they label this a e q so over here a eq equals the equality constraint matrix and this one is just called uh, called a um, I mean rather than call this I n e q they just call it a now you can actually you can call it anything you want I like to do that I like to say no that's a q and a inequality so so far we've uh, let's let's review it again. I've got an objective function. I've got three equality constraints that have to be met and I have two inequality constraints, okay? One set of additional details which is what makes this LP so powerful in in the the Linpro LP in MATLAB, and that is upper and lower bounds, mainly x. Remember our upper upper and lower bounds on the the power system uh, generators well for each each i equals 1 to n so every every um, every variable has a has an upper bound and a lower bound and and what they do is they simply say, okay, you build a, a vector, you build a vector called, uh, let's see, they're going to put them in the order, 
lower bound, that's a vector, and upper bound is a vector. So lower bound vector looks like this, and it has x1 min, x2 min, x3 min, da, 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 x and min. And upper bound is x1 plus, x2 plus, xn plus. So there, there are the upper bound and lower bound vectors. Now, um, you, you don't have to have positive numbers. You can put negative numbers in there. Um, but generally for our problems, the lower bounds will be either zero or some positive number. Um, if you don't have an upper bound, you say, well, I, you know, we'll put a, put a big number in there. It doesn't matter. You can put 10 to the 6 or something like that. Uh, it doesn't affect it, but uh, this, is, this is extremely useful uh, to have. Uh, and uh, oftentimes they will, they will describe an, a, a linear program um, <clears throat> as... as uh, having uh, the ability to to have bounding. They'll, they'll often call it a, a bounding LP. Um, and so we've, we've specified the objective function, the equality constraints, the inequality constraints, and um, the, the bounding. Now there's a couple of other Things you can you can tell in your program linprog if you want. I never do. It doesn't seem to do any good. <laughs> you can give it an initial an initial point. Sometimes that helps. Um, and there there are various op options. So in, if you if you open oh here we go. If you open MATLAB, you know when you type help limpro it'll it'll give you what, what I'm going to show you I'm, I'm going to be using using this but I'm, I will put this into the into the this is what help prints out but I'm going to give you the, uh, the gist of this without trying to go through the, the printout itself um, so and I think I think this is lowercase. I think they they I really should I really should call that linfrog like that, so that you know that that's all lowercase. Um, sometimes MATLAB gets real sticky about that. So um, here are some of the things that uh, that they want. That, that, here's here's the basic. Um, uh, call to linprog. You say x, which is a, ver a vector, equals lin linprog. Now here's what it's got. It's got a vector f. It's got a matrix A. It's got a, a vector B. Then it's got A, E, Q and BEQ and then it's got LB vector and UB. There's more to it than that. We'll see that in the in the MATLAB program. So you set it up uh, like this. So so you've got to you've got to dimension these things um, and and I like to fill them full of zeros um, in the you know when you when you set it up to call it, uh, it's best to it's always best to zero things out um, be, before you call it. Um, so if, if for example f is equal to uh, a vector 1 to n with f equal to 
C1, C2, C3, CM. There's our cost coefficients. And um, if you're not going to use the full dimensions, I, the recommended thing is to zero it out and then start putting the cost. Mm -hmm. If you leave a zero in that C list, that's okay. And of course, A x equals B is is remember this is the inequality. And the the software knows by the dimensions of these. So this has got a dimension, and of course this has to go to n, and this is n, and this is this has got I'm sorry, ax equals b, and this has a dimension, which we said we could we could call this num inequality. So this is this has got a vector num in eq. And you, you set the dimensions up. And the program says, okay, that's how many inequality constraints. So there's the there's the inequality constraints. So we've got the cost, the inequality. Notice that they do the inequalities first. Um, I don't know that there's any if that's of any special note, but uh, if that's a, a special thing or not, but uh, that's the way they do it. And and then it has the 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 equality constraints so, so you specify you know a eq x equals b i i should i i made a mistake i'm going to go back to page three this should have been less than or equal to. okay so that was that but but the program understands that you meant less than or equal but doesn't it doesn't need uh, me to forget that and b e q so and the dimension of this would just be the number of equalities. You don't you don't have to give this to it. It'll it'll get that by the dimension of those matrices. Okay, so we've now loaded up the inequality, the equalities, and then you load up lower bound, which uh, we said is a vector of x1 minus x2 minus up to xn minus and the same thing for the upper bounds except that it's x1 upper bound x2 plus xn plus so we've, we've, we've loaded all that in so you build you build the, the matrices And we've got F, A, B, A, E, Q, B, E, Q, lower bound, upper bound. And if everything goes completely smoothly, now there's all kinds of options and things, and you should read the help on, on the Linpro. It, it gives you the solution right here. It gives you the solution. Now... One of the other things that um, Linprog will give you, which I, when I found out that I could get this, um, I thought, well, this is this is fantastic, and I I have I have not gone into LP theory in my own background enough to see how to do this, but when it it solves, it gives you the solution, and and it may give you the value of f, the the optimum value. Um, but it one of the other things that you can get out of it, and, and I will I will present that later on because when we do um, <clears throat> optimal power flow with LP again, um, we we want certain of these. Remember our our our, our friendly Lagrange multipliers. Well. Uh, We can get a Lagrange. Uh, we can get a lambda for each um, equality constraint, and we can get the mu for each inequality constraint. It's it, there's a there's a, a way to call that. There's a way to dig that out of the out of the results of the Lin program. 
And that's, that, that is just un, um, amazingly powerful. Um, so as I say, this is, uh, this is one of these things. Um, you know, older professors like me, and I, I, I always thought, ah, I'm not going to do that, but now I'm going to do it. It's, uh, are always going to sit back and say, you know, you guys have got it so good. <laughs> I mean, I had to use a, 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 a stinking slide rule, which, you know, if you go into Bill Robbins' office, Professor Robbins, he has a couple sitting on his table. He'll be glad to demonstrate with it. I have one. I have my original one that I did as an undergraduate. And you could do sines, cosines, you could multiply, and tangents, and square roots, and so forth. But you couldn't add and subtract on the dumb thing. You had to write the numbers down, do the adding and subtracting by hand, then go back to the slide rule. Uh, you couldn't pass the result to, uh, you know, a, a, a register where you could sum things or anything like that. Well, then along came calculators in particular the first scientific calculator was was called the HP 45 that was the first calculator and it for, for us uh, for us Americans it was it was wonderful that that the Hewlett Packard company was the first to start selling it um, but the first four function calculators that were out there were from uh, <clears throat> Japanese companies, beautiful calculators, uh, but simply add, subtract, multiply, divide. But then, then HP came out with, uh, with what is called a scientific calculator. And of course, today you can get almost anything you want, um, and now you can get MATLAB. And I, I look back, even when I was doing my my thesis, if I'd only had MATLAB, what what I could have done. Okay, I'm off my. I'm an old guy, high horse. Okay, okay. Now, what I'm going to do now, um, there, I will, I will show you that uh, there are other things that um, you can, uh, that you can put in in. Uh, uh, the the call to um, to the programs. It, you, you can say X comma f v a l or just in that that's the 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 objective function value exit flag okay if you if you set up a bunch of constraints so that there's no set of variables that can solve at all the program will come out and say it's an infeasible problem that happens um you have uh There's a there's a thing called output. I'm going to let you read about that. Then there's lambda. This is another. This is a, this is a actually a small data set that you have to take apart. Equals lin prog. And you know lin, lin prog uh, goes with all of the uh, things that we just we just said. So you can call it with this thing on the left-hand side. And of course, there's the solution. Here's the lambdas. You can dig the lambdas out of there. This will this will give you any errors. There's a whole bunch of error codes and so forth. Um, exceedingly powerful. I don't know how big an LP it can solve. I've never pushed it uh, to its extent. That's for sure. Um, there are supercomputers on the Minnesota campus where I'm told you can have a, a MATLAB workspace of 50 G bytes or something. I, I haven't, you know, this is something you'd have to get somebody from the supercomputer center there to to, to go over with you. Okay, but that's that's how you call the program, and we're going to show you how you do this. So, how do you do an economic dispatch with linear programming? And you know the the um, the problem is not linear; it isn't. 
So, ED with LP. And, and really, this is more to, to teach you about LP and so forth. Um, the, the real use for LP will come when we do hydro scheduling or fuel scheduling. And I'm going to concoct some very interesting problems for you. And then eventually, uh, the, the, the real uh, interesting problem is, is to solve a problem like an AC optimal power flow, which AC introduces all the sines and cosines and so forth of the, of the you know, the, the complex variables and so on. And you've got to write all the equations out. And so, uh, people, people broke their knuckles on the optimal power flow problem for decades. Um, the first papers that I ever saw, roughly in the late 1960s, and I don't think the good solutions came out for 30 years. There And, and um, I wrote some papers, people wrote papers, but eventually... The LP methods are one of the methods that really work well. Okay, so remember we have a, a cost function like this. F, I, and P, I. And we have a, a P generation, a, a P, I, min. I'm going to write that out here. And a P, I, max. And we have a, we have a curve. Nice quadratic curve. Okay. Well, how do we solve that? Well, what you do... Oh, you're going to see that I, I went and I bought some... bought this set of pens. Is we, we linearize it. So I'm going to put breakpoints in red here. And I'm going to say that curve looks like three straight line segments. Now, if you look at this, this, these red functions, um, these red linear segments, um, the uh, the incremental cost, and, and this is important because if you go back and you do the dispatch. With with these, you you would have a you would have a slope. It it's not a constant. It doesn't the slope starts out? Let, let's do the slope for the for the uh, the blue function would have a slope like that, linear. Okay. When you take the derivative, you get linear. What do you get? What do you get when you do this to it? Well, you get this. You get what we call a stepwise function. Okay, it looks like that, and you think, well, if I'm if I'm going to run my lambda up and down, it can't really land on one of the. It can land on one of these flat spots, but normally it's going to sit at one of the breakpoints. Uh, but it can go back and forth in between here. It's a, it's a it's a difficult. It's very difficult to do a lambda search on. A stepwise function like that. Ah, uh, but LP loves it. Okay? <laughs> LP uh, loves this. And so, I, I say there's a variable in here. Um, which is P sub I1. P sub I2. P sub I three. So those are the those are the three segments, and you can say the segment here for for I. So this is the I one segment, the I two, and the I three. Those are just to just to label it, and each one has a slope. 
So here is, I'll write, I'll write it in red because it, it'll go on. So then you have SI1, SI2, and SI3. So I have three slopes. Um, notice, notice, and here we will shift up the paper. SI1 is less than SI2 is less than or equal to S. I3. And this, this is because the slope is constantly increasing as we go up in power. This, this is, uh, this is because the cost curve is considered to be concave. Uh, a concave uh, function, it's, it's got a positive uh, increasing cost function. Um, so we we can say then that um, that pi is equal to its own min plus pi <coughs> pi one. Okay. Now you'd look at this and you'd say, "Wait a minute! I, I want you to notice that." Um, PI1 always goes from 0 to some PI1 max. 0 is less than PI2 is less than PI2 max, etc. They always go from 0 to a max. 0 to a max. Now, because the slopes go up in order. The LP will solve and it will load this one up and it won't start to advance this one. It won't give this one anything but zero until this one is completely f at the end of its segment. Then the second segment starts to go in and so forth. So um, essentially that's that's the value of PI. Um, these go if 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 the if the generator is sitting at its minimum, then these are all zero. If it's its maximum, uh, these are all at their max, and you just add it up. So the the segments get added added on there like this. And and even more interesting than the fi of p gen is equal to fi of pi min plus S1, okay, SI1, the first slope, times PI1, plus SI2, PI2, plus SI3, PI3. And as one of my professors in undergrad used to say, voila, meaning there, we have converted it to a linear function which has a constant. This is a constant, and 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 in LP the constants that you don't need to worry about. We now have a linear function. A linear function, and um, the slopes. What are the what are the value of the slopes? Well, there's a function. It it shows you in the in the book, slope S uh, I one is going to be F uh, F I times P. Uh, let's see, F I of P gen. At, at i k plus 1 minus f i, at, I should have just called this p i um, k divided by p i k plus 1 minus p i k. And it's just, it's just this minus this divided by the, the amount of the, of the step. 
Um, very easy to calculate. Now, what you're going to do in the, in the homework problem, and, and I'm going to, so this is in the textbook, it's in chapter 3, uh, how to formulate this, uh, this one. And we have a program, it was written by a student several years ago. Uh, and it's called Adjustable Step Size LP. And I'm going to write this, This you'll, you'll get the homework uh, sheet on it on, on Friday afternoon, but in homework two, we have, it's called Adjustable Step Size LP. So you can start out and you can say, okay, uh, there's a variable called num segments. I should have called it adjustable number of segments LP. It's got to be too, too long. Anyway, the number of segments equal to 1. So I could solve it like this. LP will solve it. Solve that one right away, and you get a you get a solution. Now, what will happen is that all the generators will be either at a limit, upper or lower limit, except one, and one of them will sit between its limits. Then. Well, then I can set it to 2. And now I get a, a different kind of solution. And I can go 3, so I think I'm going to tell you to do it for 1 and 2 and maybe 5. I'll, I'll put this in the, you know, 5 and 10. And you can, you can make num segments equal to 100. Now let me let me um, let me deal with that on on the next the, the bottom of the page here. Num What does that mean? That means that I've taken that quadratic function and I've I've, I've got it approximated and I can't draw a hundred little segments like that. And I got these little tiny linear, and they're all they all come off of that. Well, I'm 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 getting closer and closer to the um, actual quadratic functions. So so so, what should happen now is when I do that with 100 segments. The solution should be very close to the solution found using Lagrange uh, uh, optimization, the Lagrange method. And um, you're going to be given uh, the, the, the program um, the student did some some uh, multiplying of the um, <laughs> he did some the the, the, the the homework problem here it is so that this homework too uh, solve 3.7 in the text and here's here's 3.7 which uh, is a little hard for you to read you, you, you I can raise it up here a little bit but notice that the the first coefficient is 225 plus 8.4 P plus 0025 P squared so let's let's say f1 of p1 is 225 
plus 8.4 P1 plus 0025 P1 squared. Um, he, mul he multiplied it by the fuel cost, which is fine. Um, but, but then, so the fuel, fuel cost is equal to 0 0.8. So, this might just have to be left as an exercise to the, for the student, which is the professor's favorite trick. Um, he, he writes it as F1 of P1 equals 0.8 times, and when he does it in MATLAB, he's got 0025 plus, uh, then he's got the next coefficient, 0.8 times 8.4, which is what I would expect. Essentially, that's P. That's the second coefficient, P1, plus... Um, 0 0.8 times um, 225 times P1 squared. He has scaled this number, not that number, and he has scaled this number. He scaled this number way down by a factor of 2... Um, <clears throat> I wonder if he's I wonder if he's done it right, but <laughs> um wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Forget this. I'm gonna point this out in the code. Um this this is the uh this is C and this is um, this is B, and this I'm sorry, this is A, and this is C. He puts C B A like that. I don't know why he just did them in the reverse order. I was looking at that, and I think, he, but the the two twenty five and the twenty five confused me. So he just we we we've got them in the opposite order. I think when you when you do this function call for a polynomial, you put the highest order and then the next and the next down to the linear. So this is C. Okay. So that explains that. So this is the program that you're going to get. Uh, you'll find it in the in the Google Drive. And there, pardon me, there is the number of segments. And so you can change this number. From one to five to ten, whatever whatever I put in there. Um, try one thousand if you if you want to. It may take a little while to run. Um, that's not that big an LP. It would mean a thousand variables for the for each generator. That's three thousand variables. That's that's nothing. Uh, as I said, there are LP codes that will solve problems with tens of thousands. Um, if you have a chance, look up uh, what they call a, an, in economics a Leontief model. It's an LP that models a, a good chunk of the U.S. economy in LP. Why do that? Well, then, <laughs> then you can say, well, suppose the uh, price of this and we adjust that and we do this with this tax and so we can play with those things. Um, anyway, so uh, this, all of these uh, pieces will, will come. I'm not going to give you stuff that's out of the textbook because you got the textbook. And you've got, you know, but everything else um, will be uh, given to you as a document uh, along with the, with the homework. And then our, our topic uh, next time... Uh, will be some some very special topics so uh, participation factors this this is we, we need to we need to be able to take a, a set of generators and and operate them in a power system where we're adjusting them to equal load that's what the, those things are about uh, transmission losses. 
very, very important, um, what we call locational marginal prices, or LMP. I'm going to get it right, L-O-C-A-T-I-O-N-A, -O -O locational marginal prices. This is the way MISO and BJM, etc. dispatch systems with LMPs. And we're going to talk about auctions. Very important. Um, if you're competing to get business, the, the best way to do it is to put all the suppliers and say, okay, you put in your bids, and the loads, uh, you, you ask them to bid to, uh, you know, to give, to give asking price and say, okay, what are, we're going to bid to so much to buy the, the generation, and if, if not, nobody comes through in our price range, we don't buy anything. And that's the way uh, the marketplace works, so we're going we're gonna to talk about that as well next time. We have a lot to cover. Um, and we're going to show how you can use, guess what, an LP, use LP to solve for, come on Bruce, in other words, to solve for who gets what out of an auction. And how much do they pay? That's done with a, with another with an LP. And uh, a lot of this material, a lot of that kind of thing, um, had to be developed before we could have deregulated the electric systems in the in the U.S. At least doing it the way the U.S. does it. Uh, I have a good friend, Alex Popolexopoulos. If some of you work for Siemens, you may have worked with him on the uh, California ISO. He was doing consulting for the European systems. <laughs> I'm chuckling over here because the Europeans don't want to do it the way the U.S. does it. And I, I, fr I frankly, I, I think a lot of it with the Europeans is just nothing but pure pride. But they have their scruples about why they don't want to do locational marginal prices and so on and so forth and they make when you don't do it that way you you have a you have an, a market that's that's far more complex far more complex and can be gamed and so the US started out PJM uh, MISO New England etc started out with the uh, locational marginal price uh, methods uh, the architect of a lot of that was an economist at, at Harvard, Bill, uh, oh, come on, Hogan, Bill Hogan, William Hogan. Uh, California didn't do it that way at first and got into lots of trouble and eventually went back to an L&P auction that, that this fellow, Alex, he worked on a lot of that. Uh, he's really an expert. He's I, sort of the world's expert on on uh, markets, electric, electric markets and power trading and so forth. Okay, uh, we will see you uh, we will see you through this uh, again. I, I don't know if, if anybody, I'm, there's probably some emails. Uh, my thing here says that, that I'm running uh, running the, the WebEx the way I should, but I don't see anybody tapping in. So something happened today, but I did the, I did the lecture and hopefully we have the video, so you can watch the video, which I will get posted as soon as possible right here. And as, uh, oh, we're going to give you some history here. Um, as Jimmy Durante used to say, good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are.